Hey, what's up guys? Another knife review for you today. Today we're talking about another controversial knife. Yes, this is the SOG SOGzilla. And a lot of controversy with this knife. When this knife first came out, everyone on the forums and everyone in the knife community kind of went, huh? <laughs> really? And the reason they did that is because most of them are very aware of different knives that are out there. And they saw the extreme similarities between this knife and the Spyderco Endura series. The Endura series has been around for a long time. And uh, this mimics that knife uh, very much so. Um, and in fact, most people wrote it off right away. Just said, okay, this is a blatant copy. They changed certain things. I don't like it. I don't like one company ripping off another company. And there was a lot of threads. You know, if you do a search on blade forums or knife forums or any of the other various good knife related forums on the internet, you will find many discussions on this knife and specifically that controversy. And people just kind of saw it as a kind of a crappy thing to do and like a copy. You know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, I can tell you that, yeah, it's extremely, extremely similar um, in a lot of ways. There's tiny little tweaks here and there which make it a different knife, I suppose, for patent purposes or, you know, for any kind of uh, lawsuit that may arise, you know, due to the design. There are enough little differences, but overall, it's like almost identical in every type of uh, functional feature on the knife. The first thing, the overall size is extremely similar, right? That's one. Um, the, the biggest thing that stands out, besides just the, the handle shape in general, and of course the you know the texture on here, although it's not exactly like Spyderco, it's the same um, thought, same idea, using this um, you know 3D kind of machine scales. It's the opening hole. Now, of course, they didn't go with a, just a straight opening hole. They did something completely unique in that it's really just two pieces that enclose that make kind of a hole, but we kind of get what they did. You know, it's kind of that, uh, yeah, I get it. I get what you did here. You tweak this, tweak that, and then you kind of call it like a new design. Now, that being said, the Spyderco Endura is a fantastic knife, a, just an amazing knife. It has a lot to offer. It's a great EDC for a slightly larger folder. Uh, if you're looking for a folder with more of like a four inch blade, ish um, that's definitely a great one to have so that being said this is still a very good knife um, in that it has a lot of the same features the overall shape the ergonomics are fantastic on it uh, of course the ease of the opening um, the, this is a lockback I know a lot of people don't like lockbacks and I don't know why a lot of people call them back locks I guess it's interchangeable I've always called them lockbacks but regardless locking mechanism is just basically a piece of steel in the back you have a little spring tension on it and it locks in with the back of the pivot. Okay, lock back. I um, love the design. I loved it the first time I seen it when it was called the Spyderco Endura. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there are slight advantages to this one as opposed to the Endura, because then the next question arises, well, why would I get this if I could just get the Spyderco if that seems to be better? Major consideration obviously would be performance. Performance is, uh, you know, number two in considerations. Number one is always price, and I'll get to that in a minute. But um, performance, how is it gonna perform? I don't want a knife that's not gonna work for me when I need it. Well, the uh, Spyderco Endura series across the board with perhaps an exception for a limited edition, um, most of the models, even the full flat ground ones, they're all using VG10 stainless steel, which is definitely uh, an upgrade to this, which is using the 8CR13 MOV. That being said, you may wanna pick an Endura if you like this overall style or pattern, um, you know, for like an EDC knife or something, but price is always a factor. That is number one. This has a lesser quality steel overall, a less performing steel, but it's also a lot cheaper. These run anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks, brand new. Now that being said, <laughs> if you wanna go with a cheaper option, the Bird line, such as the Bird Cara Cara 2, also extremely similar, all three of these knives you know, almost identical in their overall function and purpose and, and size and features, right? The, you know, the general uh, shape. I, there's, like I said, little tweaks here and there, like the um, finger twirls uh, on the handle are slightly different. You know, the, um, the angle of uh, the top of the handle, the butt. These tiny little tweaks here and there are fine. But if you've got all three of these knives, put them next to each other, picked each one up and held them and used them, if you were blindfolded, you'd be really hard pressed to figure out which one's which. So they're, believe me, they're that close if you're not familiar with the other ones. But again, to recap what I've been talking about, um, Spyderco Endura being the best, also the most expensive. You like that design, but you want to get something a little bit cheaper, then you're talking about the Sogzilla. Okay, I get basically the same functions and features, but 
I'm getting a lesser quality steel, but hey, it's a lot cheaper, 20, 30 bucks. Well, if that was the case, I would also recommend continuing to go down the ladder, so to speak, in price and look at the Bird Caracara 2, which again is very similar, also sporting the HCR13MOV, probably from the same supplier, I would imagine, um, and that's even cheaper. So, this is kind of like the middle ground. This is the knife, in, uh, and overall, having owned all three knives, multiple of the Enduras and um, two of the Bird Caracaras, um, I can say by performance and everything else, this really is right in the middle uh, with price and performance. In other words, I still think this is still slightly better in some respects than the Bird Caracara 2. It's also a little more expensive, but yet not quite as good as an Endura. Um, the most obvious thing being the blade steel. Now, blade shape, slightly different. Um, this one has a very slight uh, recurve. You can tell on the base here. We have a nice, like a slight belly. I shouldn't say a nice belly because it's not a whole lot of belly for slicing or anything. Um, but you do have a slight recurve. comes up just a little bit, just enough to be annoying for sharpening. Uh, but it will aid a little bit if you, um, you know, hook the uh, uh, base of that um, edge to cut into things. It will aid a little bit in cutting. Not much, just like I said, more, more of a pain in the butt to sharpen than anything. Um, but with this one, what I like the most about this, as opposed to say the Bird Carry Carry, if you're going with the cheaper option, is I've always been a fan of deep pocket clips. And this one certainly does have a super deep concealed pocket clip. Okay, as far as the, the tension and everything, it's great. The design, eh, so-so. I really don't care about pocket clip design that much. It might be a consideration for you since it's exposed. If you're very much aware and, and very into your appearance, you know, you got the nice watch, the nice clothes, the good shoes, that whole deal, then maybe you consider what the pocket clip looks like, but most of us really don't care, as long as it's functional, and this one certainly is functional. But this is a fully concealable clip, so that the only thing that's gonna be exposed, okay, is going to be the pocket clip. Here's a little piece of paper. This will be a shot of this. There it is, in your pocket. That's what you're looking at, okay? Consider this, if your state, and I don't talk about this much, but I it should make a separate video on this subject so people can see it, just that video. Um, but consider this to be a factor, these deep concealed pocket clips, if your state does not allow concealment of folding knives, okay? Uh, now this is something you're gonna have to kind of get in touch with a lawyer or really do your research on because what's considered concealed or not as far as folding knives, it really depends on where you are, all the way down to your town or city. Um, some people, some places feel that if your knife is in your pocket, it's clipped to your pocket, that it's concealed, even if you see some of the knife. Some people consider, you know, any type of knife completely enclosed inside of a sheath on your belt that's also concealed. Other places think that's open carry. So this is all really kind of up into uh, interpretation. Um, but the overall theme of don't do anything stupid and your knife will never be an issue continues. So just do that. Don't do anything stupid. Your knife will never be an issue. But it's something to consider. These deep carry clips, fantastic, but it might be a legal issue depending on where you are. Um, a very minor one at that. Overall though, the design is really nice on this knife. I do like this knife a lot. Like I said, to me, it kind of lands somewhere in the middle. Better than a Kara Kara 2, not quite as good as an Endura. Um, there, the one thing also that stands out besides the deep carry pocket clip is although the Enduras and the Caracaras are very heavily uh, textured, they're, they're also very ergonomic. Um, the Spyderco Endura, I think, is a li slightly more ergonomic than this one, although this still feels really good in the hand. The finger trolls are properly placed. You know, you basically have three kind of open finger trolls. They're not really deep or um, tight. And when I say tight, I mean kind of like um, more form-fitting. They're kind of opened up or wider. There's less of an angle here, which actually accommodates more variety of fingers. All right, so whether you have big fat fingers, short little fingers, skinny fat, whatever, um, they're all gonna fit pretty well in this knife. And uh, if you have a smaller hand, basically you're just gonna ride up on the knife a little bit. It's not gonna be a big deal, okay? I have fairly large hands, but I don't have big old meat mitts or anything. If you had bigger hands than me, you'd still have a little bit of real estate here to kind of grab onto. It should not be a problem at all. Um, but this thing is like jimping going wild. Uh, if you're into jimping, this is your knife because not only do you have the, the pretty textured handles here, the bi-directional, of course it's a different pattern than Spyderco, but it's the same exact concept. Again, more of the minute details that make people go, yeah, kind of crappy sug, you know, to do that. But you know what, it is what it is. Again, try to stay away from the politics of it. 
But the one thing this knife has that the Spyderco doesn't, neither does the Caracara, is there is full cross-hatching slash jimping slash texturing, whatever you want to call it, um, throughout the entire handle. Starts up here in the finger troll, goes all the way down, wraps around the back. All right, you even have some on your lock bar. It's very easy to get to. And I can tell you, you know, of course, the little thumb ramp, um, you feel the difference. There's much more texture in the frame or the outside of this knife as opposed to the sides. If this was not here, this would be quite slick. Um, it doesn't feel as aggressive, you know, as textured as the Spyderco or the Caracara for that matter. Now, by the way, they do make the Sogzilla in a couple different versions. There's a full black version. There's also a smaller version. If this was too big for you, they have their Delica size. That's what they should call it because again, pretty, pretty close in uh, design. But uh, regardless, they also have a full stainless version. Now, if you like the full stainless version, again, also consider the Caracara 2 in stainless. So, um, HCR 13 MOV. What's interesting to me though with this one is the uh, Rockwell hardness is between 56 and 58. And I can honestly tell. I could tell the difference in use. This blade gets screaming sharp if you do it properly, but it really has a, a poor time holding that edge with heavy use. Now I use this knife on multiple occasions at work to cut the plastic straps. A lot of what I'm doing with, uh, with, with cutting for work is um, we have big packs of like 35 to 50 um, flyers, newspapers, anything that's kind of bundled up like that. Pretty much every stack of magazine, they come in these bundles. They're basically shrink wrapped, but before they're shrink wrapped, they have those big uh, thick plastic straps and they're, they're crossed like this. Okay, so they go around one way, then the other way to keep the bundles together and then shrink wrapped. So what usually what I'll do is I'll poke the tip of my knife you know, upside down through the shrink wrap, zip across, so it's cutting through the shrink wrap as well as snapping both of those straps right across the middle. And then I'll just, I'll grab it and kind of fold it like that. So it just slip the whole thing off, like skin off of a piece of chicken or something. Um, and I can tell you from using this at work, it, it didn't last any more than maybe 20 minutes of that. And um, I can tell the difference. So overall performance, not not the greatest um rockwell hardness for most steels again you know there's exceptions and stuff um some steels are much higher but uh for the most part you're talking like 59 or 61. that's pretty common 56 to 58 on this uh acr 13 mov is lower i don't know if that was done specifically for some kind of advantage um sharpening is very easy really easy to do on this and it doesn't take much to get a nice edge on it but it just doesn't hold so much more suited, in my opinion, for a, a lighter UCDC. If you're someone who kind of uses it maybe every other day to cut one or two things, then uh, that shouldn't be an issue for you. But if you are someone who uses your knives very hard, um, you might want to stay away from this one. If you like this overall design and stuff, maybe go with the, uh, the Spyderco Endura. Um, I can tell you, this one I had second hands. When I got it, there was a little bit of vertical play. You can probably hear it. That's going to bug a lot of people. In fact, that's why I got this one, because the previous person was really bothered by that, <laughs> which I understand. Um, there was a little bit of a horizontal as well that was taken care of with the pivot screw. Very easy. Like most knives, we have uh, Torx bits for the construction. Um, this is also steel lined, just like the Endura and uh, Delica series. You can see that, but full steel liners on both sides. Uh, bringing the weight up to uh, 4.8 ounces on this. Um, doesn't feel like it though. Just like the Enduras, you know, compared to other knives, they're very slim line overall. They carry very well. They don't feel as heavy as they are. So almost five ounces might seem like a heavy knife. This really seems pretty feather light to me in carrying it. And specifically with the deep pocket clip, it just carries really nicely in the pocket. So overall, I'm a fan of the design, but I was already a fan when it was called a Spyderco Endura. Um, a little bit of a hit for SOG for being doing such a similar design. At the same time, it is what it is. It's a good performing knife, um, just if for light use. Um, overall, I would probably say, I mean, I'm kind of torn on this. It, it, comparing it to other knives, it's not the best option. I would much rather go with, say, you know, the, uh, the Endura for a better quality one. But if I really didn't have the coin, maybe just go with the Cara Cara 2 as kind of a beater knife and not have to worry about it. It's weird, it lands in between the middle, but that advantage of that deep pocket clip, that kind of makes me want this more than a Caracara 2. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm torn with this one. Um, it's a decent knife. Uh, it's, I'm not giving it a fantastic review. I'd never give like any kind of ratings or anything with my reviews. It's all, 
you know, it's mixed, some fact, but obviously my personal opinion on it comparing to other knives. If it was a standalone knife, if you just hand it to someone who had no idea about quality knives, they would go, yeah, I love this knife. But when you compare it specifically to other knives in the price range and stuff, eh, it doesn't fare so well. What bothered me the most, obviously, is the uh, Rockwell hardness on this. Um, you can tell the difference in performance. So, a little disappointment with that. And, of course, the obvious disappointment with the uh, design similarities. But besides that, it's a decent knife. I would say for this one, if you have the opportunity to trade, let's say you have something you're not interested in anymore and someone's willing to trade this one for you, it's worth checking out. Would I recommend going to the store and buying this specific knife? No. There's way too many better knives out there in the market in the price range. And for that style of knife, there are better options, in my opinion. So if you really like this one, if you're a huge SOG fan, this is definitely the one to have. Like, let's say if you're someone who just doesn't like Spydercos, you know, obviously Bird still being a Spyderco brand, a subsidiary of their company or a sister company. Um, if you're not into that and you're just like a hardcore SOG guy or girl, then uh, it's definitely worth checking out because the design's fantastic. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.